series. So if you're joining us live on Facebook, we want to welcome you. We thank God for you. We believe that this word is for you. Uh, the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. You clicked on this link for some reason. I pray that you'll stay on and get the full picture of what God wants to say to you in the name of Jesus. Well, let's go ahead and turn in our Bibles to the book of Romans chapter 13. We're continuing a series that we're calling Get Out and Stay Out. I want you to imagine, uh, you know, a couple in a relationship or, you know, maybe some friends and gotten into odds with one another. And they said, get out and stay out. Well, that's what we want to say to debt in our lives. Financial bondage. We want to tell financial bondage, get out and stay out. And I believe that that is the will of God. And I believe that uh, you'll see the heartbeat of God in Romans chapter 13 and verse number 8. Romans 13, 8 says this. Owe no man anything but to love one another. Verse 9 says this. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet. And if there be any other commandment, all are summed up in this commandment saying, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Well, I believe with all of my heart, this is God commanding us through the scripture to not put ourselves in the borrower's position. Amen. In other words, I believe with all of my heart that, it's, that it is not God's will for us to ever borrow in a financial arena. Whether it be for a house or for education, which some say are appreciable assets. I believe that it's God's will for us to look to him as God in our lives and ask him for whatever it is we need. Whether it be housing or clothing, whether it be transportation. And uh, he, he knows better than we do. Right. You know, financial experts may, may be out there and they may say, well, it's okay to borrow as long as you keep it within reason and you practice good uh, financial man management uh, practices. Mm -hmm. But in reality, what he said, God said in his word from this verse, and it's repeated several times, is to owe no man anything but to love him. Mm -hmm. Say that out loud yeah. with me. Owe no oh, man, man anything, anything but to love him. And that's God's will for us. And then what's interesting is in verse number nine, he immediately starts talking about commandments. Mm -hmm. He names five and then he concludes with uh, one of the great commandments of the law that you shall love your, your neighbor as yourself. Um, but what's also interesting is, is that in the Old Testament, in Deuteronomy chapter five and in Deuteronomy chapter 12, God tells us as his people, he says, you shall lend unto many nations. Mm -hmm. But thou shalt not borrow. Amen. Man, you know, that's abundantly clear. And, and, and thank God when we can take God at his word. And not just the letter, but also the spirit of it. Here's the spirit of that law. In Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 7, the scripture says this. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 22 and verse number 7. He says in Proverbs 22, 7. The rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. Amen. So on one hand, we have the letter of the law, which is God saying, don't borrow, don't owe anybody anything. Right. But in Proverbs 22 and 7, I believe he's given us the spirit of the law. He's given us why we shouldn't put ourselves in the borrower's position. And that is because the rich rule over the poor. Right. And he said, I want to make you the head and not the tail. That you'll be above only and not be beneath. Right. And if you put yourself in the position of the borrower, then you're going to be serving uh, yeah. those that are rich uh, that rule over the poor. And so we have then not just the law, but the spirit of the law in these verses. And then there's the all too famous passage of scripture. Uh, where Jesus is ministering to us and he says, take no thought for your life. 
I've got you. Whatever you need, I will take care of you. Right. Just like God takes care of the birds that fly in the air and the grass that grows in the field. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about your future. God says, I will take care of you. And one of the most wealthiest men on the planet, Jesus said, would not be taken care of mm -hmm. Like God would take care of you. He called out Solomon. And Solomon was like a multi, multi billionaire. <laughs> Amen. And uh, the blessing of the Lord makes rich. Right. God gave riches unto Solomon. Right. You know, he didn't even ask for the riches. He said, just give me wisdom. And God says, you know what? Because you haven't asked selfishly right. for me to give you this or to give you that. I'm going to give you this that you have asked me. And I'm going to go beyond that. I'm going to give you riches and honor. Amen. So God wants us and has, through Jesus, made us rich. Yeah. But obviously we need to follow his plan for our lives. And that plan for our lives does not include going to, to a, a top-rated appliance furniture store mm -hmm. and signing our name to 60 easy payments. <laughs> putting ourselves in the borrower's position. Amen. Right. Amen. Why? Because the spirit of the law says the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender. Yeah. Turn over with me to uh, Matthew chapter 6 and let's just look at that briefly. In Matthew chapter 6 we see another fundamental principle that we're ministering on on this subject. In verse number 23 Jesus says <clears throat> uh, let's pick up in 24 no one can serve two masters either he'll hate the one or love the other else he'll be loyal to the one uh, he'll dis despise the other you cannot serve God and man and then at last he in verse, six, uh, verse 33 he says but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Verse 34 says of Matthew 6, therefore do not worry about your life mm -hmm. for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient unto the day is its own trouble. Mm -hmm. So what we see in these passages of scripture are the law. Mm -hmm. God saying don't put yourself in a borrower's position mm -hmm. but then we also see the spirit of the law which is the borrower is servant to the lender and Jesus tops that by saying no man, not, not anybody that you've ever met has the ability to rightly, mm -hmm. properly mm -hmm. serve two bosses. Right. Yeah. Now, they might have two jobs, but there's going to be one <laughs> job that they like more than the other one. Come on, there's going to be one boss that they love more than another, and they're going to hate the other one, yeah. right? Yeah. And Jesus made it plain, and he really says, put yourself in a position where the only one that you have to answer to is God Almighty. Yeah. Well, I'm excited tonight to introduce this message that I want to call Big Step Number Three. Okay. Big Step. And in order to get out of debt and stay out of debt, there's going to be seven big steps that you need to take. Seven big steps that you take. Uh, big Step Number One, of course, we said, is to seek God first. Mm -hmm. If you're in something and you're entangled in it, Go to God and he'll show you how to get out of it. Especially if you're going to get out of something and not get back into it. Right. Have you ever been trying to uh, detangle something that you thought you were doing real good? You almost got this thing untangled. And sure enough, right at the end, you get it all to, and you weren't able to, to fully get it out. In the same way, what we're saying, if you've got debt in your life, financial bondage in your life, then go to God and God will show you exactly what to do. Proverbs 3 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. You may be an individual that owes right now hundreds of thousands of dollars. If you include the house at least, you can have you know credit card debt, car notes, house notes, uh, student loans, and, and all of those things are real as it is the country in which we live in. Did you know this? And I've got to add this. 78% of people mm -hmm. in America live paycheck to paycheck. Yes. That is so real. Uh, it, it, it's real in the world and it's real in the church. And I believe that there is an answer. There's deliverance. And I believe it comes from God. So big step number one is to seek God first. Big step number two is you've got to be dead to debt. That means you can't be tempted by it. You can't be seduced by it. They could offer it. They could throw it at you. They could say, matter of fact, you can have it, take it home, ride in it, sleep on it, live with it. 
and don't pay any interest for it for five years. But after that, right. you'll owe us. But, you know, go ahead and take this thing with you. Let, let me leave it here at the house for you. Right? With no obligation. What are they doing? They're trying to seduce you. Well, when you're dead to something, you can't be moved by it. Right. I mean, you're just absolutely dead. Have you ever been there where something has turned you off in life? You know, it's like, you know what, I, I, I'm not going back there. I'm done with that. I, I'm not hanging with them no more. And that's the way that we've got to be with uh, uh, financial bondage, indebtedness uh, in our lives. We've got to be dead to it. But big step number three. Somebody say big step number three. Big step number three. Is you've got to run from it as in stark terror. Big step number three. If you're going to get out of debt and not live paycheck to paycheck, then you're going to have to run from it, as in stark terror. With that in mind, I want you to turn to Proverbs chapter 6, which is the fundamental uh, uh, foundational verse and passage for tonight's message. And I won't be before you long, so just give me a few more minutes. Amen. And I'm sure this will bless you. In Proverbs chapter 6, um, I actually heard Dave Ramsey teach this message, and he used this illustration from the scripture and it's so blessed my life. I've never seen it or heard it this way. And it is God's word. Uh, incidentally, I highly recommend Financial Peace University with Dave Ramsey's ministry. Uh, we're currently hosting it here at Faith Family Church. And if you've never gone through it, I encourage you to go through it. And if you've gone through it, go through it again. It is absolutely a positive, powerful power-packed uh, series of teachings from the Bible, but with practical applications that will really change your life financially. And essentially, he takes one of the baby steps that he gives from this passage. In the book of Proverbs chapter 6, beginning in verse number 1, this is the Holy Spirit speaking through David, writing to his son. He's uh, Solomon, writing to his son. He says, my son, if you become surety for your friend, if you have shaken hands in pledge for a stranger. First one essentially says, my son, if you are in a situation where you are in debt. Right. Now, when you co-sign for somebody, you're signing as a surety that if they don't pay it, you'll pay. It. And he's writing to his son to say, if you find yourself in debt to somebody, for somebody, or for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. That's what verse 1 says. Verse 2. He says, then if you find yourself in that situation, then you are snared by the words of your mouth. You are taken by the words of your mouth. This is so amazing. Think about it. He says, if you find yourself in debt... Then let me tell you what, what has happened. You have been caught in a trap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Literally, they call a mortgage mm -hmm. a death trap. <laughs> it, 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 I mean, we have mortuaries, um, we have morticians, right. and we've got mortgages, and all of them have the same root word. I mean, this thing is really unto death. Right. I mean, it is a life and death commitment. Mm -hmm. And it becomes so serious. And the reality of it is, when you put yourself in the borrower's position, you are snared. In other words, you can't walk off the job, not because you have you don't have something else that you could do or want to do. Right. You can't walk off the job because you are in obligation mm -hmm. To pay for something that you've borrowed. That's right. Think about it. If, you're, if your house was paid for, if your transportation was paid for, if your clothing was paid for, if your education was paid for, if, if the major things in your life were already debt-free and done, mm -hmm. you would only have to go to work to pay for utilities, right. to buy food. And if you had investments that were working for you, making money for you, then you wouldn't have to go to work. You would go to work because you wanted to. Right. Amen. And that's the position that, that God wants to get all of us to. But notice the reality of it is he said you are snared by the words of your mouth. You put yourself in a trap where now you don't go because you want to. You go because you have to. You are bound to that thing. Right. So when you're in debt, verse 2 just simply teaches us you are in bondage. You're in a snare. Verse 3. So do this, my son. Deliver yourself 
For you have come into the hand of your friend or another. Go humble yourself. Plead with your friend. So notice this. He says, if you find yourself in a debt situation, mm -hmm. you're in a trap. So do this. Deliver yourself. Right. In other words, if you're going to get out of debt and stay out of self, get out of debt and stay out of debt, you're going to have to get yourself out of it. Mm -hmm. right. It won't be somebody else coming in. Because you know what? If somebody came in, if mom and them came in, if an inheritance kicked in real big and they paid off this and that and the other for you, right. that's going to be financially free for a moment. But you know, you're going to go right back into it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There are people that have won the lottery and today they're broke. That's right. There are millionaires that, that, that were once mil there were people that were once millionaires, NFL players, uh, boxers, right. sports yeah. legends, music stars, individuals you know, in, in, in the uh, in the corporate world that they they were at one place in an abundance of wealth, but now they're broke and living paycheck to paycheck right. just like other people. Trying to get gigs and jobs and all kind of things. Why? Because they didn't learn something. They didn't do it themselves. Good, they didn't good. get away from this as, as we're describing. Good. So he says, deliver yourself. Now, anytime the word tells you to do something, means you can do it. Yes. That means it doesn't matter how big that house note is, how big that car note is. You can get yourself out of what you got yourself Amen. into. Amen. He says, so deliver yourself. Plead. Humble yourself. Verse 4. He says, give no sleep to your eyes, nor slumber to your eyelids. This is another step that he's giving clearly on how to get out and stay out of a debt situation. In other words, deliver yourself and work really hard. And if you're going to get out of debt and stay out of debt, it's going to require some hard work on your part. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Right. I'll leave that part particularly for be diligent, which is big step number four. Mm -hmm. But you are going to have to work hard right. to get out of this thing. Yeah. You know, there's no get rich quick scheme and there's no get out of debt quick scheme. Come on. Yeah. It's going to take some hard work and effort for you to get out of this. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're still not yet to the fun part. We get to that right here in verse number five. Verse number five. If you're in a debt situation, verse five says, Deliver yourself like a gazelle from the hand of a hunter mm -hmm. and like a bird from the hand of the fowler. Verse 5 is the heartbeat of big step number 3, which is run from it as in stark terror. Mm -hmm. Soon and very soon, my wife and I are going to be completely debt free. Yeah. We are going through Financial Peace University, and you know, I'll put this information out there. Um, together combined, um, we have $125,702.22 worth of debt to our name. And forgive me if I'm off a couple of pennies or whatever. <laughs> but the basic idea is a little over $100,000 that we have in debt. She just gave me the thumbs up. And soon and very soon, we are going to be absolutely, totally debt free. Not just because of this supernatural outpouring from heaven and a move from God. I believe that is going to happen. And that's a part of getting out and staying out. But it's also going to be because of the diligence and faithfulness. Yeah. And because we're going to do what the word says yes. to get out and to stay out. He says here. That if you're in a debt situation, mm -hmm. then you need to deliver yourself. Now, we read that just a minute ago, yeah. but this time he says it differently. Mm -hmm. He says it with an illustration. How many of y'all know Jesus when he taught? He taught by illustration, right. right? He would say, the kingdom of heaven is like a man that cast seed into the ground, and he went to bed, and he woke up, and nothing happened. But he kept going to bed, and he kept getting up, and then there was a little sprout that came up, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then he went to bed, and he got up again, and then that grew up into a stalk. And then he went to bed, and he got up again, and then that stalk became the fruit was in the in the stalk, and then in the end, he put in the sickle, and the harvest was coming. He says that's the way things work in the kingdom of God. Yes. He was talking to a people that understood an agricultural society. Yes. And if he's saying this is the way it works with God, that there's simply seed, time, and then a harvest, then we can apply that 
to everyday life. Right. Yeah. Right. We can apply that in a marriage. We can apply that in a business. All that right. if you take something real small and put it in the ground or put it in motion, right. give it enough time, something big and something great can come out Amen. of it. Right. Amen. Well, in the same way, Solomon, the wisest man that ever lived, wrote to us, which is now not just Solomon's word, but this is God's word to us. If you want to know how to get out of debt, he gave it to you right here in verse number five. And he gives you an illustration that you might be able to understand. How many of you all like or have watched like National Geographic type you know, wildlife and okay, so this is so fun. First time I ever saw it was Dave Ramsey. He put it on the screen. He was trying to help people in how to get out of debt. And he showed a cheetah and a gazelle. I don't know about you, I've seen that kind of video clip where the cheetah starts out <laughs> real slow. <laughs> he see he got that eye on the prey and he's moving with cat like stuff. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, the fastest land mammal on the planet takes off mm -hmm. and begins to run down through this herd of gazelle, specifically wow. gazelle. So Dave Ramsey is showing this on his big screen. Mm -hmm. And he showed there was this gazelle and, and it just started running. I mean, jumping and running, running, running. And then there was a baby gazelle. Oh, man. And that little baby, because you can tell like it's like a mama or somebody just trying to help this. And this cheetah is coming all out. And I've been there. I know how this story is. <laughs> <laughs> Something is about to get wrapped up in some dust, some little shaking. <laughs> it's going to be dragged out and, and you know, and, and this music is going to get all soft and, and, and the cheetah will, will live another day. And, you know, this was just, you know, regular business for the cheetah. But did you know he showed a clip that ended differently? Mm -hmm. This clip ended where the cheetah changed direction from the big gazelle mm -hmm. and went after this little gazelle. I mean, and the cheetah is going hard after it. But then he started to slow down. <laughs> I learned later that the cheetah, the gazelle has the ability, has a longevity in their flight that could outlast the, the longevity of the cheetah. Mm -hmm. Their brain, the cheetah's brain, literally can overheat mm -hmm. if it runs at top speed too long. Wow. Y'all can tell I was watching that. You know, <laughs> I didn't know it. They kind of showed the thing. And, 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 and the cheetah knows if it's about to overheat. Can you imagine if you're in the desert running at top 70 miles an hour as an animal? Yeah. But that gazelle, there was something in them. Uh, one person put it like this. The gazelle was running for its life. Right. The cheetah was just running for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> right. How many of y'all know there's a difference? Right. And it's important for you and I to really know the difference because this is exactly the illustration, the exact illustration that God is giving you and I at how we're going to actually get out of debt. If we look at it from the world's perspective, the story doesn't end well, but from the statistic that I was told, 19 times, only one out of 19 chases, does the cheetah actually get the lunch. Mm -hmm. But the unique part about it is that you're running from a different intensity. And so I wanna read this and then I wanna put it in context from another passage of scripture and then we're going to end for tonight. Just a few more minutes before we're done. If you're going to get out of debt and stay out of debt, do verse number five. What did he say? He said, deliver yourself like the gazelle from the hand of a hunter or like a bird from the hand of the fowler. In other words, if you're going to get out and stay out, you've got to run from it like your life depends on it. Yeah. You can't be partly committed right. to getting out 
You've got to be wholehearted. Like I have settled it. You will not find me on the other side of a desk borrowing and signing for something no matter what. And you've got to have that kind of life or death intensity about it if you're actually going to make it out. Why? Because if you're not that intense, if you don't have the gazelle-like intensity, mm -hmm. then you're going to get tripped up. It's going to, some debt is going to entrap you and ensnare you once again. And you might shake loose of that and then run. But then you're running for your life. Yeah. Wasn't there a song in the church? I'm running for my life. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll find yourself running for your life all your life. You'll find yourself, you know, in your older age, you know, a grand, a grandma, grandfather, and you got debt to your name. And by that time, you're like, you know, uh, hey, I'm just going to ride it on out. <laughs> when I'm done, you know, Chase won't get paid or <laughs> Citibank won't get paid. Uh -huh. If you ever listen to older people talk, you know, amen, amen. <laughs> <laughs> Turn with me, if you would, to uh, the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6. So I added a part to this, um, big step number three, run from it as in stark terror. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to get out, stay out. You need to run from it like stark terror. Somebody said, well, what does stark mean? And I just used the old English word for the word flee. The Bible teaches us that there are things that we should flee. Flee youthful lusts. Here's one thing that we should flee that the Bible teaches. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 18, the Bible says, flee fornication. Every sin that a man does is outside of the body, but he who commits in sexual immorality or fornication sins against his own body. Another place in which the Bible talks about fleeing is that when you resist the devil, he will what? Flee from you. And so, um, back when Paul was using those words, and when this word was used, here, it had a meaning. And in the Greek language, where this word flee was written in several places in the scripture, it meant to run from as in stark terror. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I come from Detroit, and it's in me even to this day. If my wife and I walked out of the movie theater, and there were some people that ran by us, both of us, because I'm from Detroit, she's from Chicago, both of us will instinctively start running yeah. without thinking. Right. Why? Because, you know, we're not like the cat that turns back like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Why is everybody running? <laughs> now it's like, oh, yeah, what's going on? You know, we find out, you know, what y'all running for? Man, we was just exercising. <laughs> he was just challenging me to a race. It's like, okay, man, you know, y'all gotta watch that, man. No, I'm serious. Somebody's running. I almost start running. And then we're gonna figure it out later. Right. Okay. Somebody say run from it. Run, run from, from it. it. As in stark terror. As in stark and terror. if you wanna get out of debt and keep debt completely out of your life, then you need to run from it as in stark terror. So the Bible says here, and I want to use this because there, there, there's some symbolic meaning. He says, flee fornication. Mm -hmm. You want to avoid that at all costs. Right. The Bible talks about a, a strange woman in the book of Proverbs. And he said, don't go down near her door. She'll entrap you. And you'll find yourself in a situation that you don't want to be in that will keep you longer than you want to stay. Right. So he says, avoid it. The reason why I bring this into the conversation about debt is because if debt is a sin, if it is a sin, then what would that change in us? If we knew that debt was a sin, then if we love the Lord, then we would naturally want to avoid it at all costs. Mm -hmm. That's 
And it's one thing to be tripped into doing something that's against the will of God. But it's another thing to willfully do it. Yes, yes. And where sin is concerned, in most cases, we're not just saying, you know what, I'm going to go rob somebody today. You know, we don't, we don't get up and say, you know what, I'm going to go lie on somebody today. Right. I'm going to go want something that somebody else has and, and, and express it and let it control. No, if anything, we fall into or do things that blindside us, that we, it wasn't willful or intentional. But when it comes to debt, some of us willfully sign for the package. Mm -hmm. And could it be that we don't see it as sin? And because we don't see it as sin, we don't treat it as if it were mm -hmm. or would be a sin for us to do it. I'm, I'm going to tie this together perfectly in a minute. Because we don't see borrowing for a car or for a camcorder mm -hmm. because we don't see that as all oh, pastor that's not a sin it's not a sin i mean now nah, you know smoke a reefer <laughs> they still call it reefer yeah. <laughs> i don't know i'm not looking for it you know there, there's certain things and then and then, and then we the, the church really we got big sins and little sins right and we kind of you know evaluate mm -hmm. but i could tell you this irrespective of it because we don't see borrowing as a sin our perspective of it is affected. We might do it, we might not. Something comes up, but if we shifted it and treated it as if it were, right. then we would do what he's telling us to do, and that is avoid it at all costs. In other words, if you find out that I engaged in borrowing, mm -hmm. it should be like, man, how did that happen? Yeah, they tricked me. They said this was pay immediately but they switched it and it's pay over time right. and i got i got caught up in it. Mm -hmm. i thought i was signing for one thing right. innocently and i ended up signing for another what is that i avoided and it happened but it it, it caught me unawares mm -hmm. amen mm -hmm. so I, I close with this the way that you avoid fornication is you can't play with it You've got to run from it as in start terror. Mm -hmm. You can't sit there on the couch rubbing legs. You know how that starts. <laughs> oh, it's quiet. It's quiet in the church. Is it quiet in Facebook? Mm -hmm. I know how it starts. Mm -hmm. You all up under the table. <laughs> <laughs> you all up under the table. <laughs> and we at work or school. <laughs> And somehow or another, that means something, right? Yeah, yeah. And you can feel that. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. What's happening? You're on a slippery slope. That's right. right. That's right. <laughs> oh, you go come over to the apartment or come over to the house and, you know, we're two believers. Right. You know, not married. And uh, we just go watch movies. <laughs> 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 what, what's happening? What's happening? We're going to end up doing something. What's right. happening? That's we're going to slip into something right. that, that we, we're not. And if you, listen to what the scripture says. If you want to avoid it, literally, he said, nevertheless, to avoid fornication, mm -hmm. let every husband have his own wife right. and every wife has his own husband, yeah. right? Yeah. But if you, if, if you don't think in that terms, if you don't avoid it, because mm -hmm. that's what the word means. Right. It yeah. means to run from mm -hmm. this as in stark terror. Yeah. When yeah. they call and say, you know, we can say, no, I, I, you know, we don't borrow. Well, you know, we can actually, you know, do you all got good credit? Like, hold on, sir. I just told you we're on the lot looking. Right. We're not here to buy the car. We just look. Right. Okay, because you know we actually got. Oh, dude. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you need to help me because I'm about to walk away from you. Right. Because I told you we're not interested in you running the numbers right. on us borrowing for this. We don't borrow. Right. And I, I've been in situations right. like that where there's pressure. Press. Well, if if you keep, you know, that's like pouring that. You know, uh, you know, it's like turning that soft music on. Oh, yeah. I would sing for y'all some of the soft music songs. <laughs> <laughs> Turn on the lights. <laughs> let's get close. <laughs> What's happening? 
We're going to slip into something. So what do you have to do? What is, what is big step number three to get out of debt and stay out? Run, run, run from it. Somebody said flee for the case. That'll work too. But run from it. How? As in, as in start here. Amen. Did y'all get anything out of this tonight? Amen. 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 Glory to God. Thank you so much, uh, Facebook, for joining us. And we'll see you next time. Can I have every head bowed and every eye closed in prayer? <clears throat> Father, we just thank you for this. Oh.